Okay, at this point, I'm under the impression that I'm recording. Good. This says I'm recording. So what we're working on today is project number 14. Yeah, I had a little bit of trouble with uh, the re screen recording stuff a moment ago. I'm just going to move. No, I can't move it. Oh, well. Okay, so what we're doing today in project 14 is making a block style letter. Block style letters are still very commonly used in the business environment. It's just the norm. And so if you're writing a letter for a business, which wouldn't be a surprising thing for you to be doing for that first job, we want to make sure you know how to do this. Okay, the first thing, of course, I'm going to do is set this to Times New Roman 12-point font. The next thing I'm going to do is put a 2-inch top margin. Remember, the margins are the unprintable area of the page. File, and scroll down here to Page Setup. And I'm just going to change that top margin to 2. I'm not making any other changes here. This is still set to landscape, or I'm sorry, still set to portrait like it's supposed to be. And I really haven't defined much else here. Okay, good. Got it. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is, is uh, put a tab stop up here. Now, tab stop used to physically move these little pieces of metal in the typewriter, which is where they kind of got the terms. And so... This is where it came from, but there's, we still use these typing terms. We're going to put a, ta a left tab spot at three and a quarter, okay? Now, if you do not see this ruler right here, you're going to go to View, and right here where it says Show Ruler, click on that, make sure there's a check next to it. I'm going to show non-printing characters just so you guys can see what I'm doing. There's no other reason for doing that. Now, I'm going to come to three and a quarter, so here's three to four three and a half and three and a quarter right there between three and a half and three and i'm trying to get my mouse on that come on it's really close and i'm going to right click i right clicked and i selected add left tab stop so it's going to line everything up on the left edge in this area okay at this point, we're kind of to the, where we're just going to start typing. I'm going to press the tab key once. You notice the arrow there indicating I hit the tab key. Don't try to do this by hitting the space bar a million times. It never looks right, and it's a lot more work. The RGINA. For some reason, I'm typing terrible today. I'm just going to hit enter, tab, Augusta. Comma, main, zero, 04330. Enter, tab. And you notice that I'm just hitting the tab once. That arrow indicated I'm hitting the tab, November. 22nd, comma, 2024. Yep, it's 2024. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. One, two, three. Okay. And now I'll start typing the recipient's name. Now, what this block here was, this was the sender's address. So the company you work for that is sending this, that goes there. It probably seems a little bit odd to you to put the sender's address on a page. After all, don't they know where it came from? In a business environment, not always. Because in a business environment, still, some companies still do, um, a lot used to, they would t get envelopes in the receiving room, the mail room, and they would literally take the letters out of them and deliver them to whoever they were supposed to go to. That might seem a little strange, it does, uh, today, because we uh, basically have less staff in a lot of these offices now, and so this isn't as common, but still, it's kind of done. One of the reasons I'll give an example is to keep people from sending inappropriate gifts, and here what I mean by inappropriate is bribes. I use it as an example. When I worked at Siskiyou County for the computer department, I was set to buy a bunch of computers for the department. I was making a purchase of about 40 computers. And I got asked if I bought from them, would I like them to send me a sample copy? Okay, in other words, they were offering me a free computer. And quite simply, that in a lot of most work environments simply isn't acceptable because it's viewed as a bribe. Okay? One six two three one. Commerce. Bangor. Zero four four zero one. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter twice there. Okay. 
So I'm not going down nearly as far this time. I just hit her twice. You can see that there's that one blank line there, dear Mr. Green. And that ends with a colon. That's a shifting character next to the letter L. Enter, enter. And now we're just going to start copying, okay? Because I, I gave this stuff to you for a reason. Oops. Um, come down here to, come on, project number 14. And we're jumping around again. Project number 14. Stop that. Project number 14. Looking for it. Okay. Project number 14. No, hold on. Project 14 or Project 15? This is Project 15, isn't it? No, it's not, because I've already got a video for you. Okay, Project 14. Sorry about that. The first video example you see there went in wrong, so that's why I'm redoing. Okay, thank you for your email. Oh, come on. Control-C. I'm going to copy that. Control-C. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in there now. And I'm going to go with Control-Shift-V. If I were simply to paste uh, Control V, you see what it does. Um, it base it doesn't use the format I've been using, so I'm going to undo that. Control Z and Control Shift V. Oddly enough, we're still going to have some trouble, some stuff coming in, and we'll look at that later on. Backspace, and that's just copying in. That's nothing about backspace, spacebar, down arrow, spacebar. Okay, or enter. Okay, according to your email. So let's come back up here. According to your email. Control C, come back over here, Control Shift V, and I am going to still do that backspace spacebar thing. Back. The main reason you do it this here is because if you were to change the font size for some reason, um, quite simply, it's going to, you completely lose all of your formatting if you didn't do the backspace spacebar thing. So it has more to do with if you do change the, anything later on. Okay. Coming back over here to the, to this, I'm going to copy this little text block right here. Control C. Come back over here to video example. Now, because we're using a bulleted list here, and we're going to use the bulleted list tool right there. Come on, bulleted list tool. Okay. So, the oddly enough, we're going to lose a little bit of our formatting here. Okay, and that's just what's going to happen. Control Shift V. Oh, it actually worked this time. Last time it didn't. Okay, backspace, getting rid of that, and enter once. So we've got our bulleted list. Now we're going to start on the next paragraph. I will tell you the last time we did it, that didn't work as nicely for me. Okay, control C, coming back over here, and control shift V. There we go. And again, I'm going to do that backspace. Now, we didn't do that here because that would have messed up. I mean, it actually wouldn't have messed anything up. It just would have been unneeded work because on a bulleted list, all of the lines in that list end with a in, hitting the enter key or a carriage return. That's how it knows to make a new bullet point. And you guys saw how I got out of the bullets. Um, I'm going to purposely make sure you guys that I make a point. So I hit enter. There was a bullet there. I hit enter again, and that got me out. Now I'm just going to hit backspace there to get rid of that. You don't need to do that. Okay, good. And enter, and tab again. So now we're putting in the closing. Best regards. Just a comma here. Enter one more. Tab. Uh, yep. Remember, in a computer book, when you see those square brackets, it means something else goes here. Do not put in the square brackets. Do not type your name. Instead, type your name without the square brackets, okay? Just to make sure you understand what we're doing here. Enter, tab, and job title. And that looks like it, okay? I don't see anything else here that's missing. Um, if you did wind up with some odd formatting uh, happening, you know, be somehow you lost the, uh, 
uh, the Times New Roman. Again, we would just go Control A, and you come over here, change that to Times New Roman 12 point font. If you don't see a bar under text color, that means there's more than one color in this document. And again, you go Control A. If you didn't see that bar, you just come over here and you click on the on the black check mark, and that would turn all your text to black. There's nothing else to really tell you on this one, so turn it in.